Buonasera a tutti, good evening and welcome to the Italian Radio Hour. Io sono Viviana and I would like to welcome back our regular listeners and also welcome any new listeners. Also be sure to like us on Instagram and Facebook at the Italian Radio Hour and subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch up on any past video interviews. Vorrei dare il benvenuto ai nostri ascoltatori da tutto il mondo, grazie per essere con noi anche oggi mentre continuiamo il nostro viaggio per l'Italia e la cultura italiana. As we have started a few weeks ago, we are getting ready for our summer vacations. So the Italian Radio Hour is very proud to discover realities and experiences that will definitely make your trip to Italy a memorable one. And today with me, I have Miriam Pugliese, who is along with Domenico Vivino and Giovanna Bagnato, uh, that have created a cooperative called Nido di Seta, the silk nest in the province of Catanzaro. So anyone heading to Calabria, please add Nido di Seta to your stops. <clears throat> But before we find out what they do and uh, their life back in Calabria, a little publicità. Parli italiano? Do you want to learn, improve or master your Italian? Istituto Mondo Italiano can help. Located in the heart of Region Square, Mondo Italiano offers small group classes and one-on-one -on -one private tutoring in person or online to help you learn Italian in no time. Visit us online at istitutomondoitaliano.org. Buon pomeriggio, Miriam. Welcome to the program. Buon pomeriggio. Grazie mille. So um, it is uh, what you uh, do along with Domenica and Giovanna is really something special for many different facets. Again, uh, you have created this cooperative called Nido di Seta, the silk nest, but there is a much longer journey behind uh, not only the production of silk, which is your individual life experiences. So I would like to start from the very beginning. If you can share with um, our audience a little bit about your background, where you were born, where you lived, where, how life brought you back to Calabria, and along with maybe the experience of Domenico and Giovanna. With pleasure. So actually, I was born in Calabria, but uh, I was less than one year old when my parents moved to Milan. So I grew up in Milan, I'm specialized in the um, international fields, so I, I speak different languages and um, I always work in international um, fields, like uh, I was hostess for an important German company and I, was in, uh, I worked in uh, different uh, multinationals, uh, like foreign experts. So... Uh, my life br brought me also to uh, move to Berlin, so I lived in Berlin for one year, and all this experience gave me the opportunity to look my homeland, Calabria, with different eyes, because I grew up um, with this mantra, <laughs> so <laughs> my father and all the people that I know always said in Calabria there is nothing so we we have no choice we need to move but uh, all these experiences um, give me the give me the chance to actually look my omelet with new, with the with the new eyes so what I did For example, in Berlin, they they told me, oh, you need to go in the Brandenburg is, is beautiful and you can't miss it. So I loved Brandenburg, but in my, in, you know, for me, beautiful is something else, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and also the landscape and the kind of life that we have here. It's really, it's a dream, you know. And there are really a lot of uh, other things, um, but all these things um, let me do a decision. So I moved from Berlin to Calabria in our little village that is San Floro, is, is a little village of more or less. So on, on the papers, we are 700 people, but we are- In reality. <laughs> yes, in reality, we are less than 500 <clears throat> and just-, and just the off is in the uh, little historical center mm -hmm. so um we came back when i say we uh, i 
I said me, Miriam, and Domenico, because also Domenico uh, studied for, for six years in Naples. So mm -hmm. he also, after he had the degree, he wanted to do something for his own land. So we met again because we grew up together, you know, in mm, from okay. the summertime and the Christmas time was, was Calabria, you know, so we went <laughs> back here. Went and back for the le vacanze, le vacanze al mare. Yeah, le vacanze, le vacanze al mare. <laughs> exactly. So we did the vacanze always together, me, Domenico and Giovanna, because, you know, in San Flora, we, this was the people, you know, mm -hmm. and um, what we, um, what we, what we say, uh, we want to stay here, but what, what, what we can do, so we can't stay here playing cards every day, no, non vogliamo giocare a carte ogni giorno. So we had a look of what the territory uh, was able to offer us. And in, the, in this little village, San Floro, there was a, um, a really um, wonderful piece of land, completely abandoned, uh, where was pl were planted more than 3,000 mulberry trees. Mm -hmm. And the property was of the municipality. So we was wondering, oh, we can start from here to build a whole future. And we discovered that Calabria has an amazing history in silk. So, exactly. yeah, so the, the, Catanzaro was the European capital of silk before Venice, Florence, and uh, uh, Como, and so on. So we, we did a lot of researches. We had the opportunity to have this... This, this territory for rent by the municipality and here start our really um, strong adventure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And uh, one thing that also you said, I'm gonna probably grab one uh, picture from your website is that again, uh, there are two things that um, I think are very impressive and uh, that is why uh, your story, it's even more important as an example of young people that have gone um, abroad to look for better opportunities, but then came back to their homeland with a very proactive attitude. It's kind of, you know, when we can look for a job in Italy, but we can also create jobs for ourselves, which again, this is a great life lesson for everyone. And I believe in one of the previous interviews, um, is that also you have traveled quite a bit and you have seen countries where there were, uh, you know, the um, countries or even like the region of Calabria, which had been <clears throat> historically a fairly poor region, but filled of this richness that your eyes um, can definitely see and been able to yield. And then you have gone also to very wealth co wealthy country countries where um, somehow they are impoverished of all that culture um, that, uh, um, again, Calabria brings to you. And then the other point uh, that people might not be familiar with uh, is the tradition of silk. Um, as you have indicated, Calabria was the epicenter of the production of silk. And um, <clears throat> nowadays is something that you guys are bringing back, but it's not something that, uh, you know, with the industrialization and so forth, this huge industry kind of became more of a memory. And I specifically love this picture that I'm sharing because um, going back to uh, the origins means also working with uh, the elderly people that have been doing this uh, uh, trade um, and this art for many years and kind of leveraging their, uh, their knowledge. Um, so you indicated that the uh, comune had this land um, that uh, you guys wanted to rent. And if I'm if I if I have done my research correctly, you had also a mayor of San Floro earlier now in the 1990s that wanted to plant over 3000 um, mulberry trees again to uh, mm, to get back uh, into this industry, but I guess between red tape administration and other things that didn't really work yeah. out. Is it correct? So uh, in San Floro, there was this land uh, of, that the property was of the municipality, except 
for this reason, because uh, in the 90s, um, a mayor had this dream. So uh, he discovered uh, a document uh, dated of the 60th century, where in San Floro were produced more than one tons of cocoons, uh, silk cocoons. So I don't know if uh, someone of our listeners uh, have ever seen a cocoon, but it's extremely small and light. Can you imagine one tons of cocoon? That means that the production was huge. So he wanted to, to start from our past to build the future of, of um, this small community. That's why he planned, he let people plant this, uh, this mulberry trees. The problem was when he finished his, um, his job and he wasn't able because he, uh, when the municipality changed, so the new municipality absolutely didn't believe in this job and everything was completely abandoned. So that's, yes, that is our, this is one of my favorite picture because mm-hmm. uh, is the silkworm making the cocoon. This is more or less uh, the first day of weaving because the silkworm employs three days to weave mm-hmm. this wonderful unique thread all around him that is the mm-hmm. silk cocoon. Okay. So yes, that uh, didn't really, this initiative didn't really bring much. Uh, now, just because you guys wanted uh, to um, uh, cultivate the land, I'm sure it was not a, an easy process. You might. The, how long did it actually take from um, planning or wanted or uh, requesting to uh, rent this land to actually have all the paperwork in place to finally commence your activity? So we employ one year just to, you know, f- figure out with this municipality uh, how to, to work on this land. So finally, we had the permission on January 2014. So we f- we can say fight for, uh, for one year. Uh, but, you know, also for us, the different... The, kind of difficult things was that nobody of us, because we are free founders, nobody of us has was specialized, not even in silkworm reading, (laughs) not even in the textile industry. So Domenico, when he was uh, a baby, when he was a a kid, used sometimes to breed the silkworm with um, his grandfather, because until Mm -hmm. our grandfather, grandparents' generation, everybody used to breed silkworms for domestic use. Uh, but um, we had to relearn everything. So the first thing that we did was like stalkerized uh, our elders and the elders of the nearby villages to understand and absorb all the knowledge that they had. Uh, one of these elder was Angeluzza, uh, was the madam that you show in the first picture. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, she died, but she was great. She was amazing. She was a maestra. Of, of weaving so uh, she is she absolutely is on the top of the list of our teachers uh, but we had to re- relearn everything but the knowledge that we had from our elders were okay for domestical things but not to make up you know a company for this so we backpacked and we traveled all around the ro- world in especially in thailand india and also mexico mm-hmm. and um, there we had the opportunity to absolutely to improve our knowledges and you know when you share information there is always a big growth so this is the path that we had during mm-hmm. these 10 years because now our 10 years of need to be I was going to say, yes, 2014, yeah. we're in 2024, so happy uh, um, anniversary. So you accrued all this uh, uh, experience and then uh, went back. And uh, I'm going to um, to show a video, but we're going to talk over it because um, I'm actually very curious for you to tell us a little bit about the process of um, um, what is actually happening on your land because it's a very manual uh, labor. You guys are indeed very focused on the protection of the environment. Um, You have an organic farm. There is a lot going on, but I'm actually, for those that have never seen the production, 
um, of, um, uh, of silk. Again, I'm going to uh, show a video, but we, you can tell us a little bit about yeah. the life. Um, so, okay, let me just uh, get the... Okay, let's go ahead and tell us. You have been also in the news quite a bit, I have to say, because uh, again, uh, from you know the coming back, the rediscovery of Calabria, and also getting into this uh, beautiful industry. But tell us a little bit what your um, your daily life look like. Yes. Um, well, first of all, I have to say that we work on more or less total nine acres of land that are in size a pine forest. So we are in a really uncontaminated place. And this is really important for silkworms because pesticides and smog can be really, really, really bad for silk. They are not able to uh, live their life or make the cocoon in this condition. Also, that's why in Northern Italy, they are not really able to do it anymore for environment conditions. Hmm. So in this, uh, we are, Nowadays, we are the bigger uh, company in Europe who makes this kind of thing. So we live and the people that work with us live just on sericulture. So our work is divided in three fields. There is agriculture, there is handicraft, and there is experience because we made silk an experience actually. So why agriculture? Agriculture is the heart of everything because without the mulberry trees, we can't breed the silkworms. So we need the mulberry trees to collect the leaves um, to feed our silkworms. So the silkworms are caterpillar. Domenico in this in this moment in the video is cutting the, the leaves for, for, for the little silkworms. Uh, in, this, in, in this video, they have more or less 10 days old and uh, they need to eat really a lot. Uh, their life cycle, like silkworm, is of 28 days. So we feed them for 28 days. And just to give you two numbers, uh, 20,000 silkworms eat 500 kilos of mulberry leaves. Mm -hmm. So they eat really a lot. So these are, it, and all these things could be just by hand. So this is just labor intensive. So when I wrap the 28 days, uh, the silkworm um, doesn't want to eat anymore and uh, start to climb and weave the silk cocoon. Mm. So, how the, the silkworm makes the cocoon is really special because the, the cocoon is exactly one unique thread that is weaved all around and glued by a, a glue made by the silkworm that is called sericin. So the cocoon is exactly a natural spool of thread that looks like this because there is the, this glue that completely attached, that completely glued the thread. So that's the ag agricultural process. Also, you know, mulberry trees make also mulberries. So we transform the mulberries in confiture, liqueurs, teas, and so on. Uh, from the cocoons start the artisans work. So we have at least uh, a network of eight uh, artisans mm -hmm. uh, and each one is specialized in one step of silk processing. So we have reelers, we have spinners, we have degummers, we have um, dyers and we have weavers. Mm -hmm. So uh, until the final product. So really all the, the supply chain, we called centimeter zero because it's less than kilometers, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> from the trees until the final products are like meters, you know? <laughs> And um, and then there is the experience because uh, really when people think about silk, they don't really think at all that it's an agricultural product. You know, silk is an agricultural product. So the people has doesn't doesn't really have I they don't have idea of what silk is, what silk process is. Just when people think about silk, uh, think about this really soft textile, no, nothing else. But people that come to us experience silk from the weaving, from the different kind of silk, because we have really, really, really a 
huge varieties of silk. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they can bring the silkworm with us if they want. Uh, they can reel the silk with us and they can really walk under our wonderful mulberry trees. So mm -hmm. really, you know, this is what is our activity today. Mm -hmm. And I would assume that uh, uh, what type of tourists uh, do you um, have you been able to attract? I would assume that this is an amazing experience also for school, uh, for schools and also, um, you know, also the children to see how something is produced in every single step, along also maybe with people that maybe have dealt with uh, silk threads before, or maybe are just curious about coming and learn, maybe you have workshops. Oh yes, so I so just to give you an idea, the, low, the last year we made more than 6,500 people come here. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, all this experience is really fascinating for all the ages. We mm -hmm. have, of course, we work a lot with children, because, you know, you can see absolutely from nothing, from the trees to the textile. And we have, we do really a hands-on experience. So mm -hmm. it's, it's really nice for them. But we have people from all around the world that come here. Because especially in the Western world, we are the last that really do the things like our ancestor did. And mm -hmm. also the, do we do the big production of Europe. So we are the main producer of Europe. So we are fascinating under different point of view. Mm -hmm. Also because we transform the tradition in innovation. Mm -hmm. So uh, now we invented a machine because uh, unfortunately we weren't able to import from China and India that was the only producer of this kind of machine nowadays because mm -hmm. uh, they don't have European certification. So, um, they can't uh we made this machine for the first time and we were able to transport this um this tradition on international fashion carpets so this for us was really really a wonderful goal mm -hmm. uh so before we continue with our conversation a couple of words from our sponsors applying for italian citizenship need documents translation Istituto Mondo Italiano provides certified translations and assistance services. Be sure to visit us at istitutomondoitaliano.org and schedule your free consultation. Un caffè, per favore. My first cup of coffee sets the tone for my entire day, and I get my coffee at La Prima Espresso. La Prima has been brewing Pittsburgh Espresso coffee for nearly 35 years. Try any of their in-house roasted varieties of beans from all over the world at home, or come and enjoy an espresso or a cappuccino at any of their locations where their friendly baristas and familiar faces will make you feel at home. Visit laprima.com to get La Prima Espresso coffee at your door. So uh, we mentioned before that there are three people in the, in the cooperative. There is yourself, Domenico and Giovanna. So maybe we can also go over uh, how the tasks might be um, divided among the, the three of you, who is in charge or what, and again, what yeah. their day uh, looks like um, as well. And in the big background, I will just show beautiful pictures that you were kind enough to show with me, but uh, they're really, uh, they're so delicate and uh, so, Tell us about uh, a little more about uh, um, Giovanna and Domenico's life and any other information about your your responsibilities. Yeah, so Giovanna is our artist. Uh, she has a degree in the Belle Arti, so in arts, and she is the one who develop uh, the majority of our final products. Mm -hmm. Domenico, uh, he, he's the one who take care of the mulberry trees, mm -hmm. uh, of the silkworm breeding, and also we have a little agriturismo, mm -hmm. so where we welcome our our guests, and he also manage that that part. About me, um, 
I take care of our visitors. Mm-hmm. Uh, I make I make all the workshop because we teach, we learn, we give the opportunity to the people to learn all the different branches mm-hmm. uh, behind the sick production, administration, and mm-hmm. artisans. So I am really specialized in this end of things. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, also the network we have eight artisans uh, I manage all the network of of, of this um, of these fields and you are an amazing uh, weaver yourself I, I can <laughs> see from these pictures so nowadays <laughs> yes nowadays uh, I don't weave anymore but um, until 2016 we were just free uh, but two hands <laughs> per person and 24 hour a day were enough to do all the work. So that's why we 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 made a call to say, hey, there's, there, there, there are some artisans that are interested to work with us and create a network. <laughs> so and now, thanks God, we have this eight person. Uh-huh. Uh, so just, uh, you know, let's talk about creating a whole experience, you know, uh, maybe you can share. So, you know, you are in the province of Catanzaro. So here yes, we, have we are in the front. Map, uh, a map of uh, Calabria, which yes. is a land that offers so much. So let's assume we, we're, we're trying to give some ideas uh, to people that might not have come to uh, Calabria uh, before. You also you mentioned your agriturismo, so let's also talk about what um, options you personally might uh, offer to the uh, tourists. But uh, uh, where are we going to make them land? Um, is it La Mezia Terme? Yes. Is it the closest? Yes, La Mezia Terme uh, ha- is the mo- this is the bigger airport that we have in Calabria, also international airport, and we have more or less 25 minutes by car from the for the from, from this airport oh you're very uh, close 25 yes, minutes yes yes it's 25 minutes by car and we are excelling in the front of catanzaro so we are a small village in the front of the capital mm-hmm. because catanzaro is the capital of calabria and actually calabria is really authentic so uh, under all the point of view. So I really um, advise to organize uh, the trip before coming here. Uh, we are part of, um, of a network of mm-hmm. people that um, th- this network name is Riviera e Borghi degli Angeli. Oh. And, they, and they have a website where you can build uh, your own uh, vacations uh, with uh, how to sleep, uh, where to, uh, sorry, where to sleep, where to eat, the experience to do in the land, uh, in the mountains, in the sea, because you know Calabria is amazing because our mountains end in the sea, so we have really a lot to offer to mm-hmm. people that love tradition, nature, good food. You know, when I say really authentic, we are really the expert of real or real life. So, you know, mm-hmm. the good thing of real life. Um, <clears throat> yes, I'm going to share actually the website. Thank you so very much. It's always, uh, always enjoy very much learning about the new uh, opportunity. We'll share also your website, but this is the Riviera degli Angeli yes. and La Calabria da visitare tutto l'anno. So it's definitely a destination that you can visit all year uh, round. I personally remember when I was just a couple of years ago, you know, between I'm a big fan of licorice, so <laughs> Rossano for me, yeah, me. <laughs> anything bergamot uh, and then just the, the just the drives, you know, it's, um, you know, indeed, it's something that uh, there are so many, also the, the museums, obviously, uh, Reggio and, uh, and, and, and many others. So, um, tell us a, a little more about some other hidden jewels, uh, maybe of the territory. Um, of around. course. Mm-hmm. So uh, we are uh, by, you know, we are in the narrowest point of Italy because our uh, less than 30 kilometers between uh, the Ionian Sea and the Tyrrhenian Sea. Mm-hmm. So uh, also from this point, we are in the center of the center of Calabria. So we are really good connecting of both sides. So the Ionian and the Tyrrhenian. Mm-hmm. In the um, Tiriolo, for example, is in the middle and have a wonderful view. You can see um, also artisan built 
um, music instruments like guitars, like uh, lira and other instruments like this. Weavers also there, some of our weavers stay there, but there is a beautiful panorama because it's really height. And from there, you are able to see Calabria in, form, in front of you. There is a strip of land, and also the, all the Ailo, I, Aeolian uh, island. Isole, isole Aeolia. I'm sorry, I have the difficulties to say this, this word in English. And also Badolato is a village that I really advise you all to visit. Is a beautiful, beautiful village with a beautiful sea and can offer really a lot, uh, not just the beauty of the village and of the sea, but also of the people. And there, there is different restaurants where you can eat really, really, really healthy and good. Mm -hmm. And near there, there is Santa Caterina Suloyonio, where there are um, guys that came back to Calabria like us, and they uh, have um, they work with the donkeys there. So mm -hmm. they can, uh, you can do trekking on donkeys mm -hmm. uh, with donkeys and see all this beautiful and uh, really authentic uh, landscape. And uh, we are really close to Scolatum Archaeological Park. That is a Greek Roman archaeological site nearby the sea. It is amazing. It is just uh, 10 minutes by car from where we are. Mm -hmm. And there, this is, you know, the, the really, uh, mm, it's difficult that you, you will find all this uh, place that, that I'm telling you on, for example, the um, last uh, um, touristic guides, because uh, usually is really a lot focused on the Tyrrhenian coast, like mm -hmm. Tropea, like Pizzo. You know, there is beautiful too, but it's really commercial. Mm -hmm. This side is absolutely undiscovered. So it's it's made for people that want to, to see. I don't want to be repetitive, but the authentic is for me is the really good adjective for this, this part of territory. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you touch upon uh, when we talked about uh, um, <clears throat> not only your your farm um, from uh, uh, from farm to table, so to speak. So for those of you that might not be familiar with the Calabrian cuisine, you know, um, tell us a little bit about what are some of the flavors. I mean, my vision is as soon as you kind of cross the region, <clears throat> you enter Calabria. <laughs> Peperoncini piccanti, la bomba, and then the tropea <laughs> onion. Okay. But there are many, you know, fileia. It's a beautiful yeah. uh, pasta dish that is uh, that I was lucky enough to see. Again, the older the elder women making it still with a little yeah. uh, straw. So tell us a little bit about the flavors of Calabrian cuisine. Yeah, so, so you mentioned the king, first of all. <laughs> peperoncino, peperoncino is everywhere, probably also in the milk in the morning with the kids. I'm joking. <laughs> but uh, the first time that I tried uh, spicy pepper, I was five years old. And my, my grandparents say, give a bite and you will... Uh, manage the things forever and was like this so for <laughs> us pepperoncino is something really important in our culture so spicy peppers and actually is really a lot about seasons so for example now is the season of wild fennel mm -hmm. so we used to put wild fennel at least everywhere during our cooking in this part of Calabria is really famous the homemade pasta macaroni that is really similar to filea. They are on the same family. And um, you mentioned a lot of licorice that is absolutely correct, but we have also uh, peperoni cruschi that are this uh, really yeah. particular, um, not spicy peppers because they are sweet. They are dried in the sun and they are crispy. So when you eat them, it's like eating um, like patatine, you know, chips. Yes. Not, not, not peppers, you know, and we have dried pomatoes, uh, especially San Floro and this area is a huge producer of tomatoes. So we make tomatoes, we say that we are pomodorari. So <laughs> <laughs> we can, we could, we are able to eat pomodoro tomatoes in every 
You well, might have to make a gelato uh, flavor, one with wild fennel in first. Tropea, in Tropea, you will find <laughs> the In Tropea, yeah. believe it or not, yes, I was I was actually in, uh, in Tropea. There is this, uh, he's fairly famous for their... Um, Tonino, probably. Was the Tonino, name. and it was gelato alla cipolla di Tropea. And olive, olives. E, uh, anduia. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah, so how could we forget That's about <laughs> And you mentioned something, so Anduia is really important from Polino to Aspromonte. So, and we put Anduia everywhere. In Anduia, probably everybody knows, but is is a kind of spreadable salami, kind of spicy, not really a lot spicy, but it's spreadable. And, you know, it's like this because it had a big amount of fat, but... Calabria is not the right place to do a diet, so do it before I'm <laughs> not where you come here. And the olives, olives for us is really something uh, incredible. So when you come here, the, the main landscape is up all above olive trees, so uh, oil production and um, uh, olive undersold in the water. So we do olives in every possible way absolutely mm -hmm. and in our territory you know mulberries we do comfort warranties and reports and so on and uh, is is a land of oranges too and peaches you know it's here is all agriculture so all the things that you can imagine here there are in really abundance <laughs> absolutely and that's also you know going back to <clears throat> what uh, you have said in a in a, a previous interview, the richness of the land that might apparently look like uh, doesn't have much to offer, but indeed it, it there is abundance of things that um, uh, the region can uh, can offer to those living there and as well to the curious tourists. So if we were to sum up again the philosophy of Nido di Seta. And a message for the young uh, generation. Um, what would you feel sharing, recommending um, to yeah. to them? And again, it just again uh, the philosophy of uh, of your organization. But first of all, I want to share just a a, a thought. Um, we love to stay here because the individual can really do the difference on the territory. So mm -hmm. it's necessary one person who think and make something that can change uh, the destiny of the territory. So um, for us, it wasn't this way. So here we can make the difference. We are not like mouses on the, you know, on a wheel, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, we, 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 we can really, all the people can play a bit, really big role for the society. And um, thing, things, thanks God, are changing here too. But um, I think that Calabria is a really virgin land. And, um, you know, uh, we grew up with there is nothing to do here. I'm not absolutely agree. And I already told you, but also if it was, true where there is nothing means that there is everything to build so mm -hmm. this is uh i we need people here young people to that put their energy and care to let relieve uh the, this land again so and you know we uh we start nido di seta that domenico there was the old the the, el, the eldest was 26 years old i was 24 mm -hmm. so um we had nothing and we never received public money to do this mm -hmm. and we have the, the, the power uh two years ago so we work without the power until two years ago so and we now, we ce la stiamo facendo. So now, yeah. we, you know, we are having big results. So, but if we were able to do this, everybody are able to do something impressive for their territory. So, of course, it's not simple, but you, you need passion and, you know, the, the wish, the... Um, you, perseverance you yeah to keep perseverance, on going. exactly mm -hmm. so it's possible don't be scared uh is absolutely possible and we need you young people <laughs> we need you 
<laughs> well, that would be, I mean, it's always that we as Instituto Mondo Italiano get contacted often also by uh, uh, people looking for experiences of uh, uh, being able to go to Italy and work in a farm set up, um, uh, in a farm like set up in exchange of uh, labor, you know, usually there are some uh, arrangements where there's, you know, room and board, so to speak, in a, in a, in exchange for, for that. So we'll make sure to uh, include all your contact details into the, the, the show notes. And uh, I just want to uh, share your uh, website because again, in addition to amazing videos and information, um, I have already put my eye on a couple of bracelets. So there are some artifacts that are also, <laughs> and there are, that's my weak point, you know, and especially if I know the labor that has gone uh, behind and, uh, uh, you know, the, the passion, it makes that piece even more uh, special. Again, you have, uh, tell us again, a little bit of um, uh, the products that um, people will be able to find onto the website. So yeah, we have the food, so we have the confiture and the teas, but we have also the soaps and we have scarves, uh, silk jewels, mm -hmm. and also some uh, clothing. So really all the supply chain from the trees until the final products. Um, I'm yeah. curious about this kit. Um, yeah, so we, we give the opportunity to people to experience hands on the silk, uh, the silk chain. Oh. So, yeah, so especially the back kit is especially for schools that they have the opportunity to bring the silkworm in, in classroom. But also there are kits that uh, allows people to make their own silk from the cocoon to the silk with we give a tutorial and uh, and all other things and so mm -hmm. and here there are the bracelets the <laughs> <table. laughs> we'll see yeah. what is going <laughs> <laughs> these yes, appear yes. from your side and appear on my wrist <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 with pleasure so well uh, i cannot thank you enough for your uh time medium and again for the passion that you domenico and giovanna have put into this mission again congratulations on your 10th year anniversary because this really shows the commitment that all three of you have uh, put forth uh, as young, uh, the young generation to come back to Calabria and create something really magical that takes a lot of work. So we get to see the final products and the glory of it. But uh, again, there is a lot of work and tenacity behind it. And then um, I was looking at the last names uh, between yours, Pugliese, Vivina and Bagnato. These are actually three last names that are I don't want to say very popular, but I have three students here in Pittsburgh, all of them of Calabrian origins with this last name. So I will reach out to them. Oh, really? Because who knows? They might be distant cousins of... Uh... <laughs> Could be four, four cousins. Considering that this is the year of uh, the roots tourism, people going back and trace ah, back yes, their yes, yes. ancestors. Um, here they can come find the ancestors and also find a, in a, a, in an, uh, an ancient um, trade as well and uh, uh, some great experiences. Well, unfortunately, our time together is up. Il Big Ben ha detto stop. And it's time for us to say arrivederci e alla prossima. We want to thank you for tuning in into the program. And if you have any questions or comments or if you have any topics you would like us to address, please contact us at the Italian Radio Hour at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. And remember, if you or any of your family and friends have missed a prior episode or would like to listen to this episode again, subscribe to the Italian Radio Hour on YouTube or where you catch your favorite podcast. Again, I would like to say mille, mille, mille grazie uh, to our cool. guest, uh, uh, Miriam Pugliese along with uh, Domenico Vivina and Giovanna Bagnato, um, the whole uh, Nido di Seta uh, crew, our sponsors, Istituto Mondo Italiano and La Prima Espresso. Until next time, alla prossima. Ciao, ciao. ciao.